In this video, we're going to be going over the CATIA v5 scene command. I have a lot of students who are just confused about the scene, especially when it comes to the partial versus full overload mode type. Uh, so we're going to break that down and really discuss the differences. We'll talk about how to set them up and how to manage them and then how to apply the scene onto your assembly. So let's start off with the term scene and discuss really what it is. Some people call this a variation, um, but it's essentially just a way that you can have several different configurations of your assembly. That may mean that some parts are hidden, some parts are exploded, but again, you're just creating uh, various uh, versions of the same assembly file on your screen. So the first scene that I want to start off with is the default scene, or sometimes called the initial state scene. It's the scene that goes back to normal. All of the components are on the screen where I wanted them to be, and it's just a way of quickly kind of recovering uh, the kind of full extent of your assembly back on your screen quickly. So to begin, I'm going to create our initial state or default state scene um, where I have all of my parts within my assembly kind of fully put together and they're all visualized just like you see on the screen here. So this scene's going to be actually really easy to create because I'm not going to change anything at all. I'm going to find my buttons. This is uh, called the Scenes Toolbar, and um, I am using the Assembly Design Workbench, although you can also use the DMU Navigator Workbench to create these. And that first button is the Enhanced Scene. When you click on it, you do have to give it a name. You can leave it as the automatic naming, which is very generic, Scene.1, Scene.2, etc. I would recommend always giving your scenes a meaningful descriptive name. So I'm going to call this, again, the Default um, again, just everything back to normal scene. The biggest problem that my students have is which one of these do I choose down at the bottom? A partial or a full overload mode? It's much easier to describe what these are doing if I create a couple of them and have a few to get started. Now I am going to have the full overload mode for this default scene so that way when I click OK it will take me into the scene creation area. So the scene creation area is going to by default switch to this green background so don't freak out if you see the background color change. You will also notice that um, even though you're in the assembly design workbench still most of the buttons are grayed out um, and we have the enhanced scenes toolbar that has now popped up in which we can do a couple of things which we'll describe later but remember this is the default scene this is the one that I just want to be able to recover and get back so I'm not going to make any changes here I'm simply going to hit the exit scene which is that little arrow popping out of a box so I am now back into my regular assembly kind of area and I want to scroll down because these scenes are created in the applications branch of your product file and now you can see that I have that default scene let's begin by creating another scene where we focus on exploding the parts around our kind of T support part in the middle and then the brackets on the side. So we've got a couple of fasteners that are securing this together. So we want to focus in on the right hand side and we want to show those brackets and those fasteners all kind of exploded. Now I do want to do this in kind of a logical way. I want my fasteners to kind of slide out along their kind of axial direction. So let's uh, try this here with our scene button. Again, I'm going to click on the enhanced scene. I'm going to turn off the automatic naming. And I'm going to call this my right side explode. Now again, we have to make the choice. Do we want this to be an overload mode of partial or full? Um, for right now, I'm just going to stick with full. And again, I'll explain the difference here in just a second. When I click OK, we're in this scene creation area with the green background. All right, here's the big one, guys. <laughs> My students always say, hey, there's an explode button. That's exactly what, what we want it to do. We want these parts to kind of explode away. To be honest, I very seldomly use the CATIA generated explode command. I just find that it doesn't give as much control over me manually making my own explode. Let me show you this quickly. You can see that um, if I do the CATIA generated explode, I can choose the depth of the explode. So first level components versus all level, including parts of a subassembly. So let's try to do the all level. So everything, including the subassembly parts. 
Um, and then you can also choose um, which one that you want to be like the fixed part, so the part that doesn't move from beginning to end. Um, I'm gonna have that to be this T support, so this big item here in the middle. I'm gonna move this box out of the way. Next we'll do um, the type. So there is a 3D type of an explode. So if you hit apply, you can see that, well, I get my little information box. I'm just gonna hit do not show this message again. Um, so here's the 3D explode. Uh, probably not the best type of explode. You can see how it did keep um, some of like my fasteners are somewhat aligned, but like they're not aligned over here with these like uh, brackets themselves. There's also, excuse me, a 2D explode. And if I apply the 2D explode, this basically applies it uh, according to the 2D camera viewpoint. So if I explode it and then move my camera around and then hit apply again, it, it's a completely different explode every time you move your camera. Um, and then lastly, if you do the constrained, so a lot of my students are like, well, the constraint, that's the one that's going to work because it's going to try to explode it based off of the constraints that are built into the assembly. Yeah, if I hit apply on that one, you can see that, again, this, um, this explode, in some circumstances, it just doesn't have enough logic built into the algorithm to where it's a very um, kind of predictable explode. So... Um, a lot of times I have to end up manually doing this myself, so I'm going to hit cancel because clearly none of those explodes were nice and logical for me to use. So um, with the help of my compass, I'm going to turn the snap automatically on, um, and then I'm just going to do this somewhat tediously. I'm going to snap my compass onto these parts, hold down the control key, so I'll bring out some fasteners, slide them out this way, click on my bracket, slide them out this way, Again, just separating them so that way there's some space in between each one. And then let me grab these fasteners here on the back. So again, I'm just holding down the control key. As I click on them, that will allow the compass to move basically all four at one time. Notice I am being careful to drag it in the direction of the compass that would be corresponding for the fasteners to their uh, implicit axis direction and for the bracket, the one that brought it over here to the right hand side. So now I can send my compass back up to the corner, and this is essentially my finished right side explode. Um, I do anticipate some of my students asking at this point. They say, hey, how do you turn on those, um, those little ghost lines? Those little, um, I believe Creo calls it the offset lines. Um, but basically, it would be like a line that would kind of show that these parts were still connected somehow via their implicit or center line axis. Um, Katia unfortunately doesn't have anything like that. Now that's not to say that you can't eventually add it later to the drawing file. Typically if I'm advising any of my students, I say why don't you just add that on the fly later inside of your drawing file. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But note that there's no default option here for us to add those. Alright, I'm going to exit because I'm done creating this right side explode. Now we're going to create a left side explode where we're going to do something very similar, but I'm going to actually have a lot of these parts to be hidden. So once again, we're going to click on our enhanced scene. I'm going to turn this off, make this a full overload, and we will call this left side explode. And then when I click OK, with a little bit of movie magic, I'm just increasing the speed of my clip in here, showing the same process, hiding some parts, exploding out some parts manually. And to finish that scene, I'm just going to hit the exit command. Now, finally, let's do our partial explode. We're going to focus on the front components here to do that. Same process as before. Click the button. I'm going to call this my front partial explode. And this time, we are going to leave it to the partial overload mode. And once again, with a little bit of movie magic, I am just taking these certain components and manually exploding them. So finally we have four different scenes that we can start to apply to our different uh, assembly configurations. Now to apply the scenes, for instance our right side explode, uh, the first method is with the right click. You right click, you go down to the object, you say apply scene on an assembly and then apply the entire scene onto the assembly. That will 
uh, give it that particular configuration. Now remember the right side explode was to not hide anything but just to tell the right side components to be separated. There's a second method to applying the scenes and I think it's a bit faster. It's in your scenes toolbar. It's over here. It's the second button called scenes browser. Uh, the first thing you have to do is come over here and hit customize and it says when you double click on these little thumbnails um, do you want to activate the scene uh, meaning you could alter it so what we want to do is the second one down where it says apply the entire scene onto the assembly so now what that means is if I double click on it it'll just boom go right to it so if I double click on the default notice it pulls it back together if I double click on right side it goes to the right side configuration if I do the left side explode, it goes to the left side configuration. And then obviously if I were to click on the partial view, it would go to that configuration. But let's talk about why is this partial special. If I go to any of the full overload modes, they will always appear exactly the way that you set them up. So my default mode, all parts were together, everything is visible right side mode everything is visible but only those right side parts are separated but the left side mode is kind of special the left side mode we did hide a bunch of stuff and then we told the left side parts to, to be separated so if I start off in the default mode which was the full overload mode and then I apply the partial it will actually do its job because remember the partial was to explode these six couple of items here so the partial overload mode says I am going to apply this scene on how the screen currently looks but if I go to the right side explode and then apply the partial it once again shows up but what if I go to the left side explode and then apply the partial well the problem here is that the left side explode was set up so that way all of the parts in the front are by default hidden. So if I double click to now apply the front partial exploded scene, nothing happens. Because again, the partial overload modes apply themselves to how the screen is currently configured. And since those items are currently in an invisible state, you can't see the effect on the screen. But if I go back to one of the previous, like the default ones, and then click on the partial, I can see that, of course. So again, the partial ones um, do have this concept of, do you always want it to look the way that you set it up, or do you want it to apply itself to the way that it has currently configured on the screen? So let's say that you are in a situation where you want to see the left side explode but you also want it to physically show the components of the front partial explode because currently if I double click on the front partial explode nothing is showing up so let's talk about how to fix that so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our initial state our default configuration of our product file I'm going to close down the scenes browser and then we need to modify the partial explode that we've done on the front end. To do this, you double click on it. So with all things in Katia, if you want to modify it, you double click on it. So when you double click on it, it does take you back to that scene creation area. From here, you have to tell there are six components that I basically moved and separated. So it's the um, it's actually a sub-assembly, so the sub-assembly has four components, and then there was this retaining pin and a pin. So those four items, what I have to tell Katia to do is to always have those items to be visualized. And for doing that, we have a toolbar, or we have a flyout in the toolbar that will only pop up in our partial overload mode scenes and we have four different options. We can overload their position. We can overload their visibility status, hide show. We can overload certain graphical properties about it, or we can overload whether or not it's been like activated or deactivated. So for me, I want to make sure that they're always visible. So I'm going to click on this overload, hide show, and I'm going to click on my sub assembly, which are those four parts. And then I'll just do this once again with the pin and the retaining pin.
Then I'll exit, and now let's test it to make sure that it works. So I'll go back to my Scenes browser. So remember before, the problem was, if I went to a configuration in which those items were currently in the invisible state, which they are right here, you can see that they are currently invisible, the problem was is then if I applied a partial scene mode to it, remember the partial modes would only apply themselves to how it was currently configured, so it, we didn't see a difference when I double clicked. But now that I've went out of my way to overload their visibility status, if I double click now, notice that they pop up regardless. So again, you even though you set it up as partial, you can tell certain items to be always kind of overloaded, which means that they're always then going to show up or be overridden. So we have all of these different various scenes. You can create as many scenes as you would like. There's no limitation on the numbers. So now let's talk about how to use these scenes in a drawing format. To begin, I'm going to go back to my initial state scene, close my scene browser, and just make a, a quick new drawing file here. Now what I like to do with my drawing files is tile them side by side so I can see both of my screens. Now drawings are created by dropping in various drawing views. So the view that I'm going to drop in here is going to be my isometric view. And your isometric view is created by you clicking on a flat surface. However, if I come over here and if I just click on this flat surface, this isometric view is always going to be tied to what the screen currently looks like. So the problem with that is if I come in and if I activate one of my scenes, and then if I go back to the drawing, the drawing's constantly going to be asking you to update it, and then obviously you can see that this drawing is in fact right updating to the right side explode. But then the problem is, is if I go back and I say, oh, I want to go back to the default explode, like I'm constantly having to just update my drawing file over and over again, which I don't want to have to do. So when you're making these drawing views and you want them to be specifically made off of these various scenes, you want to do one extra step. You are going to click on the scene from your tree, then you are going to click on a flat surface of your model. So notice that this view is automatically created with that exploded scene variation and it will always stay like that. Now let me maximize this and let's talk about those little ghost lines, those little offset lines that some CAD packages offer but Katia doesn't offer it. Again, most of the time when I am uh, consulting and other people ask me about this, I just say, hey, wait till you get to the drawing because in your drafting workbench of Katia, you can very easily come in here and drop in these different construction lines. So I could very easily just start dropping in these you know, various lines. And then once I have created these lines on the screen, I can then take them and I can change their color, I can change their thickness value, I can change the pattern. All right, so I can manually drop in these offset lines to my drawing a little bit later. So that's what I would recommend instead of adding it into the part file. It's a little bit more complicated if you were to try and add that into the part files and into the various different scenes.